I want to read three headlines. Just want to read three headlines that I think will sort of set the stage for what we're going to talk about here for the next little bit. I generally start my talks by reading three headlines from that morning's news and then relate each one to a larger theme that I'm going to talk about. The second headline actually is also from this morning's journal. It says, U.S. executives remain pessimistic. Great. Here's what it says. The audience really seems to appreciate that somebody got up early that morning and did a fair amount of work for them. The best part about what I do at Fortune is that I get a 360 degree view of what's happening in the business climate. I am constantly learning about the largest issues going on any place and I'm learning about them from the people who are making things happen. Jamie Dimon here next to me, Chairman and CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase. Mutar Kent is Chairman and CEO of the Coca-Cola Company. Yuan Ching Yang is Chairman and CEO of Lenovo Group. I get to talk to the business leaders of great corporations, the entrepreneurs who are going to disrupt business, to the government leaders who are going to help shape the environment for all of these businesses, and of course to consumers and others who are buying or not buying the goods and services from those businesses. Our topic is winning in a friction-free world. This is something we're going to be hearing a lot more about. Labor, information, and money move easily, cheaply, and almost instantly in a friction-free economy. Every organization and every person can possess the 21st century's most valuable assets openness to new ideas, ingenuity, and imagination. The best companies, the most successful companies, will see it as a huge opportunity because they can be that competitor who comes out of nowhere. That's why a friction-free economy is, bottom line, more opportunity than ever in history. Every business, I don't care what business you're in, is in danger of being disrupted by a competitor they never even thought of. The disruption that can happen to a company in no time is like nothing we have ever seen before. Earlier this year, the largest taxi co-op in San Francisco filed for bankruptcy, and we know why, right? We all know why because somebody innovated that business model and it wasn't them. Uber has a business model that doesn't require as much capital. It's the largest ride service in the world and it doesn't own any cars. Another thing that's gonna last for a long time, geopolitical unrest. What's new is that there is instability among the great powers, US, China, Russia, that didn't used to be there. I'm at the Fortune Global Forum in Guangzhou, where I'm moderating several of the sessions. Attendees here include Apple CEO Tim Cook, Ford Motor Chairman Bill Ford, Walmart Chairman Greg Penner, Alibaba founder and CEO Jack Ma, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, and many others. One big message is coming through here. The clear message from the government officials is, China is open for business, welcoming businesses from all over the world, especially entrepreneurs, and promising them a level playing field. Every business leader I've spoken to here agrees this is a clear effort to fill the void being left by the United States, which is perceived as closing itself off from the world. Every business person has to confront and embrace the fact that government's playing a larger role in our business lives and it's not going to go back to the way it was. Our topic is business versus government. Uh, recognizing the fact that every business, and particularly this industry, the tech industry broadly defined, is very heavily influenced by government policy, and there's been an awful lot of talk about which of those policies are good and which are bad, and that's what we're going to talk about now. 